Hello, I'm Michael Good, CEO of the University of Utah Health, and we present the COVID update for July 21st, 2020. In our COVID update, we look at the data, statistics, and trends with the coronavirus pandemic in our country, our state, and here at the University of Utah. At the national level, we see similar trends that we've been following for the past few weeks. The last few days, we've seen between 63 and 65,000 new coronavirus cases each day in the country. After a few days, uh, up over 70,000. The average uh, seven-day average is running around 68,000 new coronavirus cases uh, each day. We talk about uh, this uh, inflection point. We had seen the number of new deaths from coronavirus each day declining. Uh, hitting a, a low point here, a nadir, if you will, uh, of a rant on, uh, on uh, July 5th, and then uh, increasing uh, a little bit, uh, the, the slope is then decreasing, but still uh, seeing uh, uh, on average about uh, 800 new uh, deaths from coronavirus uh, each day. Again, we pointed out before these, uh, so many aspects of the coronavirus pandemic have delays with um, this uh, deep, this low point in the new cases uh, uh, chart, if you will, uh, occurring around uh, June 9th, but this uh, uh, similar point in the new deaths, uh, number of new deaths, not occurring till almost a month later uh, on July 5th. Again, many reasons for that, uh, again, both trends at the national level uh, will continue to watch. Uh, here in Utah, uh, uh, we have, after a, a long period of increasing number of new cases each day, um, in the last few days, again, early part of the week, uh, kind of new uh, highs related to the number of new cases. Uh, but uh, yesterday and again today, uh, 400 uh, new cases, causing a little bit of flattening in the number of new cases uh, each day. Taking into account those uh, uh, higher numbers for a few days and lower numbers, uh, we're currently averaging about 642 new coronavirus diagnoses um, each day. We're similarly trying to assess uh, the new cases, a uh, low point, if you will, occurred around May 27th, and somewhat similar to the uh, national level, trying to chart uh, if there is an inflection point in our number of new cases. Now, I caution the numbers are low. We've been having on average one death, uh, sorry, two deaths, plus or minus one uh, for most of the pandemic. Uh, the last few days, we've had uh, four new deaths, plus or minus one. Uh, a little bit wider uh, uh, distance between the May 27th uh, low point in the new cases and the July 5th uh, low point uh, or, or, or change from that kind of steady number of new deaths to the, to the increase. Uh, but we'll watch and particularly we want to see this new cases currently at 642 uh, continue uh, to decline. It's important for our whole uh, community and our uh, health system, just everyone involved, uh, that these new cases per day uh, stabilize uh, and then decrease. This is another way of uh, looking. This is the, the number of new cases, but shown on a seven-day rolling average. And here you see a little bit better uh, what I had talked about is a somewhat of a leveling even a, a, a little bit of a decrease here uh, over the last few days. Again, caution in interpreting short-term trends. Uh, we said similar things at this point and similar things at this point, uh, only then to go on and have other periods or subsequent periods where the caseload uh, increased. So new cases per day, an important variable that we're uh, watching closely uh, and hopefully this uh, Leveling uh, can continue, uh, but we caution and need to be uh, ready and prepared uh, if it doesn't. Uh, this, uh, uh, this is the number of active cases, the number of current infections, 
and we continue to hold uh, right at 4,000, I'm sorry, four individuals per thousand utons uh, with an active um, coronavirus uh, case. First time we've seen a little bit of a downtick these two days of 400 to 500 new cases, uh, putting a little bit of a, a hook on that curve. Uh, but again, we'll, we'll continue to watch. I find this particular statistic very challenging. On the one hand, out of every thousand utons, 996 do not have a coronavirus infection. 996 out of 1,000 do not have a coronavirus infection. But the four that do, um, we're not identifying those four individuals uh, quick enough. And by the time they are identified, get their test, contact tracing uh, identifies those they've been in contact with. On average, they've infected five other individuals. And by the time we identify those five with the active infection, uh, they've infected six others. So the numbers are small, but they continue to grow. And so we need to uh, slow down and actually stop the spread of this virus um, in our community. This is the number of positive tests per, uh, uh, ten, or, uh, number of positive tests per 100, or you can think of it as this would be 10% of those that get a coronavirus test, test positive. This is 12% and so on. And as we've done the last few weeks, we are seeing the, the number of positive tests uh, per 100 come down. The trend line here, we show you what the trend line looked like three weeks ago, and then a week ago, and then in this current update. And you can see the trend line is shifting downward. That means for every 100 tests that we run uh, as a state, uh, there's a few less positive tests each week uh, over the last uh, three weeks. Remember prior we were concerned when up here we had a, a number of periods where we were seeing 12, 13, 14 percent uh, on average. I do remind you these are uh, averaged. I believe they're three-day um, average uh, positive tests and so uh, uh, we keep that in mind but we are seeing this positive move from higher percentage to lower, somewhat lower percentages on the three-day uh, rolling average. A reproductive number uh, from Dr. Zhang and Dr. Seymour, uh, unfortunately, uh, shows a move uh, off of uh, one. We had had a, a week, nearly a week-long period here. Um, this is very worrisome uh, and probably reflects those high days of uh, increased number of new cases, uh, a reproductive rate of even 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 uh, goes back to what I just said. By the time we identify four people with an infection, uh, they've infected five others, the five have infected six, uh, and so on. Uh, our case numbers won't revert until we see a reproductive number uh, less than one. And uh, as I pointed out before, any period where reproductive number is above one means the case volume will be growing. And it's not until we get the reproductive number below one that we'll see those case numbers um, decrease. So we'll continue to watch a reproductive number. Some interesting trends in hospitalization. Uh, certainly the overall trend continues to be up, but a kind of a week of uh, approximately stable number. Remember the blue line is the 14-day additive cumulative total uh, of hospital admissions, the left chart in the state, the right chart uh, in our county. Again, a lot of day-to-day -day variability, uh, but in large part, uh, most days we're seeing somewhere between 25 and 35 uh, new hospital admissions uh, for, for coronavirus in our state, a little bit stable over the last week. Uh, more of a continuing uptrend uh, in Salt Lake County with approximately uh, 10 to 20 admissions uh, each day for uh, coronavirus. Maybe a little bit of settling out here, but uh, in Salt Lake County, a continued uptrend in hospitalizations. Here's our charts for uh, University of Utah Hospital. 
Similarly to the Salt Lake County chart, uh, we have seen uh, increased hospitalizations at University Hospital. In fact, a few days ago, we had our highest one-day number of admissions of coronavirus patients uh, with nine patients. Uh, again, large day-to-day -day variability after a, after a day of uh, seven admissions and then nine admissions. In the next two days, we had just three uh, and two admissions. We are seeing the patients admitted to University Hospital um, are, are having more severe forms of COVID-19. You see this in the lower right chart uh, where uh, the red line uh, here are the patients that are admitted uh, to the intensive care unit. The light gray line are the patients admitted to the hospital but not to an intensive care unit. And although again with day-to-day -day variability, uh, approximately 18 to 20 patients at any one time. Uh, over the past uh, uh, almost a month, month, month and a half, between uh, 15 and 20 patients not in the ICU, uh, and we had been seeing about eight to 10 patients in the ICU, and then over the last uh, few weeks, uh, really now more patients in the ICU uh, uh, than not. You also see, uh, again, uh, increased utilization of our hospital, and uh, uh, we continue to do the things we need to do to make sure both uh, ICU beds and beds will be available in the hospital. Uh, but we're clearly uh, uh, more have more coronavirus patients in University Hospital uh, than we've had at any point uh, in this pandemic. We add a new slide this week to uh, add perspective to the a coronavirus pandemic. On this chart, we show the three-day average of deaths uh, in Utah from a variety of uh, uh, ailments and conditions uh, ranging from seasonal flu, suicide, stroke, uh, traffic uh, accidents, cancer, uh, and heart disease. And as we've said before, uh, coronavirus is a more severe than seasonal flu, uh, both in terms of the um, hospitalization and the uh, experiences of the patients that are hospitalized, uh, but also, uh, as you can see here, uh, on the death number of three-day average of deaths, uh, clearly uh, several fold higher than seasonal flu. Currently, uh, as shown by the dotted line, uh, COVID-19 average deaths per day in Utah uh, has rose in, risen now to be uh, above stroke, uh, but closing in, but not yet uh, above traffic accidents. So I think that's helpful. Um, we spend uh, uh, large parts of our day and our energy uh, focusing on COVID, uh, particularly because of this uh, increasing rate that we see uh, continuing. Uh, but for perspective now, uh, COVID in Utah uh, the average death rate is somewhere between strokes uh, and traffic accidents. This is uh, really uh, encouraging. If the trends I'm about to show you uh, continue really uh, encouraging news. On this graph, we show the rolling seven-day average uh, of daily uh, coronavirus cases. Um, so this is the average daily a uh, number of coronavirus cases. Uh, first on the blue line in Salt Lake County, the orange line, the rest of Utah, and uh, in the green line uh, toward the bottom, Utah County. We also show uh, here uh, at this point when the Salt Lake County implemented uh, the mask mandate for Salt Lake County. And you can see again with some day-to-day uh, uh, -day a variation, but clearly this line uh, begins to level off shortly after that uh, mask mandate. And particularly over the last seven days, uh, we've seen a really a positive trend in the number uh, of new cases. That same leveling off uh, has not occurred in the rest of the state, uh, where for most of the rest of the state, there is not a mask mandate. Masks are encouraged. Uh, but not mandated. And again, some recent increases uh, in uh, Utah County. 
Uh, we do believe masks are very effective at slowing down the transmission of coronavirus. We've had a universal masking policy here at University of Utah Health uh, for many weeks now. University of Utah has a mask mandate and will have universal masking uh, when students and faculty return to campus in late August. We're gonna continue to watch these trends on a county by county basis. Um, really a lot of emerging literature uh, suggesting just how beneficial masks can be, not only for the individual uh, that has a coronavirus infection, uh, and it's, it really helps slow the spread of respiratory secretions, but some increasing uh, uh, suggestions and evidence that the mask is actually very beneficial to the person who does not have uh, a coronavirus infection. Um, we're beginning to better understand the, the amount of virus that is transferred from one person to the other may be involved in the severity of the illness that that person uh, experiences. And even though uh, on the healthy individual, the mask may not uh, prevent every single virus uh, from entering, uh, it does decrease the number. And that may be important. We're learning, as I've shared with you in previous uh, uh, podcasts, that uh, for every person who has coronavirus uh, in the greater Salt Lake uh, City area, there's two other individuals who have had the infection uh, and don't uh, even realize it until they get an antibody test. And the antibody test shows uh, that they've actually had a coronavirus. So it's very, very important that we get everyone wearing masks and we'll continue to watch those county level trends uh, to see if that trend uh, between Salt Lake County and the other counties continues. So that completes our COVID-19 update for July 21st, 2020. We'll be back next week as we continue to follow the data, the statistics and the trends of the coronavirus pandemic in our nation, our state, and here at the University of Utah.